Good morning, everyone. I'm at the Wildflower Reserve, um, and I was going to go up there and do a little devotion, but I promised myself that if the gate was closed, I would not um, go in there. And, and as you can see, it is closed. Uh, so I'm going to just ask that you uh, take a little drive with me, and I know that some of you probably won't like that I'm doing this, but I'm just going to be a sh very short distance. So let's go for a little drive. Just going for a little drive here. I hope you saw the sunrise this morning. Beautiful 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 pink and blue skies since we can't get into the wildflower reserve I'm just gonna stop right here um, at the entrance to the park near the creek here see I told you it was just a short drive Good morning. Good morning. Uh, normally at this point, we are up there at the Wildflower Reserve. And we start out the service this way. By saying, He is risen. I am firmly believing that you said along with me, He is risen indeed. He is risen he is risen indeed. I love that service at the Wildflower Reserve. I love we, we set a fire in there in the fireplace and we fill that place with people from all over the county. And um, we, uh, we worship God. We bring some guitars and, and the keyboard and we sing and we have coffee and donuts. And it's, a, it's an amazing time. But what I'm reminded of this morning is um, those are all just kind of fancy extras. The message never changes. Message never changes. Jesus is risen. He is alive. I have a song I want to share with you. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see the, the beauty of the park and the creek while you listen to this song about... Um, just saying, arise, arise, my soul, arise.
I hear He owns me for his child I can no longer fear With confidence I now draw nigh With confidence I now draw nigh The Father of a Father cry. that song arise 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 my soul arise give me a second here to uh turn off my vehicle i'm gonna head outside and read some scripture with you this morning ah what a great song what a great scene again if you're just tuning in uh Plan to be at the Wildflower Reserve where we normally are, but uh, the gate was the gate was up, so I couldn't get in there. What a beautiful scene this morning! Beautiful. Thank you for watching this morning. I want to just read the scripture. It's the same scripture I'm going to uh, preach from later this morning. Um, But that's actually no different. I always do the same uh, sermon at uh, the Wildflower Reserve for Sunrise that I do um, for our 11 o'clock service. And this morning, I'm in Luke. Luke chapter 24. And uh, I'm just going to read it. And then uh, pray with you and uh, show this beautiful creek a little bit more and uh, look forward to seeing you um, later on for our live worship service. So hear the word of the Lord, Matthew, I'm sorry, Luke, Luke, Luke 24. Actually, pray with me, please, before I read this. Lord God, I just thank you for this beautiful morning where we remember that uh, you are risen You are risen indeed. By the power of your Holy Spirit, now speak to us and burn in our hearts your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. 
They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see, but him they did not see. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Excuse me, one second. I apologize. It's beginning to rain pretty hard. So I need to come inside. Verse 30. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us? while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Luke 24, 1 through 48. I'll be speaking more about those verses. There's some fascinating things and a lot of different details that you can get uh, way sidetracked on, um, but the message is so clear. Jesus is alive. 
and given us the message of repentance and forgiveness of sins. Would I rather be up the road at the Wildflower Reserve with the nice warm fire and a room full of people and afterwards have donuts and coffee? Yeah, I would. This is a nice spot too. I was hoping it wouldn't be raining. Um, but it doesn't matter. There's one thing that this uh, pandemic we're living in has taught us is that, that it doesn't matter. The donuts and the coffee and the fire and the building, it doesn't matter. The message is the one thing that matters. Forgiveness of sins because of what Jesus did on the cross. I have another song for you to listen to, um, and then we'll pray. I'm going to put my uh, window down so you can see the beauty of the creek while you listen to the deep, deep love of Jesus. If I can get my technology to work here.
Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this day. I thank you that you are risen, that you did not lay in that grave. Oh Lord, what power, what majesty, what glory that you are alive today sitting at the right hand of the Father reigning. Lord, um, we cry out to you on this different Easter day. We cry out for you to have your mercy, to pour your mercy on us, that you would be glorified, that people would come to know you that don't know you, that you would have a relationship with people that they didn't have before because you came to save sinners. You came to give us the message of repentance turning toward you is what that means repentance and you came to give us the cross the message of forgiveness of sins and then you rose again and you are alive and that is the core of our message no matter where we're at or even if we're scattered and i just thank you for it lord i thank you for each person watching each person that will watch us in the future lord i pray that uh as those two people were walking along to Emmaus, they said their hearts burned within them as you opened the scriptures. I pray that you would um, open the scriptures in our hearts and our hearts would burn within us, that you might be uh, known, that you might be glorified, that you might be honored, um, Lord, and that we would just rejoice in what you've done because we don't deserve it. And there's nothing we could do to earn it. Yet you give it so freely. Lord, on this Easter morning, we shout, He is risen. He is risen indeed. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I think it uh, has stopped raining a little bit, so... Just going to get outside and thank you all for for watching. Um, again, my hope was to go at least outside the Wildflower Reserve. Um, it will be opened because the, the uh, outside of the park is open, but the gate was closed at 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, so I promised myself I would not <laughs> jump over that gate um, as much as I wanted to. Um, so we came down here to the entrance instead. And... Uh, Thank you for watching, listening to the scripture, listening to the songs, and seeing the beautiful um, scenery of God's creation. And I look forward to seeing you all, um, so to speak, at 11 o'clock um, when we will sing and we'll praise God. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to turn the camera around, let you see the creek here for another minute. Um, but after I shout this and you shout back at me on your screens, He is risen! He is risen! He is risen indeed. Amen. Happy Easter. Have a great day.